The only positive that we can take from the speech was the fact that there finally seems to be a direction in which the UK is taking the matter of Brexit. Um, obviously, from our particular point of view, we don't feel that her speech has brought any positives to what uh, Gibraltar wants to achieve and what Gibraltar's future is in working forwards. Uh, and our particular concern is fluidity at the frontier and how that is going to affect the thousands of workers that come across into Gibraltar and do the services that we actually require them to do so. I mean, comparisons which are being thrown about are the ones with uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland, but that's something perhaps that is not going to be applicable to Gibraltar because in the first instance, within Ireland and Northern Ireland, you have two P uh, individuals, or sorry, two countries that want to have a, a proper relationship and they want to have the border not be an issue whereas here it's completely different. Even if we were to enter into some element of a common free travel area uh, between Gibraltar and Spain, would that only be pertinent to Gibraltarians and Spaniards? What about the other EU nationals that work within, say, our gaming industries, which might not be um, you know, uh, something which it can be facilitated for them? So these are things which Unite are extremely concerned with. I think that we can't say any more that Theresa May doesn't have a plan because she set it out uh, she set out the direction that the UK is going quite clearly. Um, obviously the detail is yet to be fleshed out, um, but the general direction is quite clear. We're, um, we're leaving the EU and we're leaving the single market. Um, from a Gibraltar point of view, I think that we have to focus on Gibraltar, we have to focus on our economy, and we have to focus on our businesses going forward. Um, so what does that mean? I think that the main thing for us to do is everything that is within our control. So if, for example, we are able to um, get an agreement between Gibraltar and the UK, this needs to be put on the table as soon as possible so that um, our services industry can have the certainty it needs in order to continue its business going forward. Um, is this within our control? Yes, this is within our control. So, for example, there, there is the concern about the border and how Spain will react to the border. Um, and yes, it's, it's a big concern, but it's something that's, like, that's beyond us at the moment. So um, I think that the GFSB would ask the government to focus on what is within our reach um, and within our ask. Um, so the agreement between Gibraltar and the UK, I think, is one of the, um, the main things that we would like to see um, progressing. It's disappointing she didn't, meet, she didn't mention Gibraltar. However, she did mention the Northern Irish, Southern Irish border, and that has a, a good synergy with what we have. It's, it's the UK with the EU. That's what we have here. And she said she was looking hard at a solution to have a free-flowing border. So if you can apply that logic to here, then hopefully th 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 there'll be a lot of negotiations with the EU and we can apply that here. So that was a positive. She also mentioned that the EU workers were welcome in in the UK and again if you apply that logic that's the model that we want obviously because we have a free-flowing border with um, EU workers. In terms of anything else I don't think there are any surprises so what would we want to see? Well in my view a lot of it is now out of our hands however what we shouldn't do is just allow the UK to do our bidding. You know, we should be looking at Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Jersey, Guernsey, none of those are in the EU but they're successful business models. So hopefully we're looking at those other economies and there's a lot that we can copy from those economies and we should have a plan B ready in case the negotiations don't go well.